Hello, I'm Thorad, a Cloud Support Engineer here at the AWS office in Sydney. Today I'm going to show you how to get information about CPU allocation in Amazon Elastic Container Service. Let's get started. When creating an Amazon ECS task definition, you can specify CPU limits at both the task and container level. These limits impact cluster performance and should be tuned based on your use case. ECS measures CPU resources in units where 1024 units equals one vCPU. For example, 2048 CPU units is two vCPU. You have the option to define CPU limits in vCPU instead of CPU units in the task definition. ECS then converts it into units when the task is registered. Properly configuring these CPU values is important to determine the right allocation that meets your application's workload requirements and optimize cluster performance. Let's begin with task level CPU allocation. Amazon ECS tasks can run on AWS Fargate or Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. The CPU parameter at the task level sets the required CPU needed for the task, as well as limits the maximum CPU resources that the containers in the task can use. After logging into the AWS Management Console, navigate to the Elastic Container Service Console. Then select the Task Definitions page. Here you can create a new task definition. Enter the task definition family name and make sure that AWS Fargate is selected. For Fargate, you can only select a set combination of CPU and memory limits. Note that the memory parameter specifies the amount of memory in gigabytes to present to the container. When using the EC2 launch type, either a task level memory value or a container level memory value must be specified. For Fargate, the task level memory value must be specified. For EC2, you can select any combination of vCPU and memory you like. For CPU, enter one vCPU, and for memory, two gigabytes. In container details, enter the name and image URI. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click Create. The task definitions page appears after it's successfully created. We can see here on the containers tab that the task is 1024 CPU units, or one vCPU. This means that ECS will schedule this on an instance that has at least one vCPU available. Now let's create a task definition for container level allocation for launching on EC2. When running tasks on Amazon EC2, the CPU parameter is optional. Choose the task definitions page again. Now create a new task definition. Enter the task definition family name and make sure that Amazon EC2 instances is selected. Here we can see that we can edit the task CPU field. We will remove the pre-filled values for the CPU and memory at the task level. In container details, enter the name and the image URI. Enter a CPU and hard memory value. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page and click Create. The task definitions page appears after it's created successfully. We can see here on the containers tab that the task CPU is blank. We can see that the 1024 CPU units are assigned to the container. Now let's create a task definition without specifying the CPU limits at the task or container levels. Choose the task definitions page again. Now create a new task definition. Enter the task definition family name and make sure that Amazon EC2 instances is selected. Here we can see that we can edit the task CPU field. In container details, enter the name and the image URI. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page and click Create. The task definitions page appears after it's created successfully. We can see here on the Containers tab that the task and the container CPU are both blank. When you don't specify a CPU parameter at all, either at the task or container level in your task definition, Amazon ECS will schedule the tasks on any instance running. This approach doesn't reduce the available CPU units to your ECS container instance. Now let's demonstrate how this works. First, create an ECS cluster. Go to the ECS console and choose clusters. Choose create cluster. Enter a name for the cluster. Under Infrastructure, uncheck AWS Fargate Serverless and select Amazon EC2 instances. Now choose Create a new ASG on demand and select the EC2 instance type M5 Large, which has 2048 CPU units. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to limit our cluster to one EC2 instance. Under Network Settings for Amazon EC2 instances, 
select the security groups and subnets. Leave everything as default. When all the options are selected, click Create. Here we can see our container has two vCPU available for tasks to be scheduled on. Now create and run an ECS task with task level CPU allocation and run it on the ECS cluster. Create a new task definition with Amazon EC2 instances and one vCPU or 1024 CPU units. Select Amazon EC2 instances in the launch type and enter one vCPU in CPU field of the task size. Enter the container name and the image URI leave everything else as default and click Create. In the ECS cluster that we created in the previous step, go to the task section and choose Run New Task. Choose the task definition that we created in the previous step and choose Create. Verify that the task is running on the ECS container instance that we registered. Go to the ECS cluster to view CPU utilization. Under the Infrastructure tab, go to the Container Instances click on the container instance and check under the resources and networking tab. The value that you want to see is about 50% of the container instances total reserved CPU capacity is available. The actual CPU usage might be higher or lower depending on the task running at the time. But the important thing is that there's about half of the full CPU reservation free and ready to take on new tasks. Now let's schedule additional tasks. You can set the vCPU allocation at the container level. ECS will combine all the container's vCPU allocations set in the task and use that to schedule the task. In this demo, we'll create a task that has two containers running. Create a task definition with container level CPU allocation. In the ECS service, create a new task definition. Do not set the CPU parameter at the task level. In the task definition, add two containers. For one container, set the CPU parameter to 0.5 vCPU. Enter the container name and the image URI. For the other container, set the CPU parameter to 0.25 vCPU. Enter the container name and the image URI. Leave everything else as default. Click Create to save the task definition. In the ECS cluster, run a new task using the task definition that we just created. Review the task details to confirm the CPU allocation for each container. Verify that each container is allocated the CPU units that we defined at the container level, even though there is no task level CPU definition. Check the CPU units in use. You will see that 1,792 CPU units are in use, or 1.75 vCPU. CPU contention occurs when multiple containers or processes on the host simultaneously demand more CPU and compete for more CPU time than is available. When contention happens, containers are throttled to the task level CPU limits set. If one task has one vCPU and another has two vCPU, the two vCPU task will get twice as much CPU time as the one vCPU task. This throttling ensures fair resource distribution on set allocations for each task based on the set CPU allocations. When the task CPU limit is not set, containers can use all the CPU available on the host, even beyond what is set at the container level. Containers may experience reduced performance or increased latency when throttled. Monitoring CPU usage across containers helps identify contention issues. To address contention, consider adjusting CPU allocations, scaling resources, or optimizing application code. So now you know how to get information about CPU allocation in Amazon Elastic Container Service. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from us all here at AWS. Thank you.